Legacy Precious Metals is the company that I trust to give you good and patient counsel for investing in your retirement. The Biden administration has caused a financial crisis and they have no clue how to fix it. Oil prices have skyrocketed and when oil prices go up, not only do your expenses go up, but the cost of transportation and shipping spikes, leading the prices of goods to rise. And when and we are already seeing record inflation. That's the last thing that we need. Our economy is in trouble and you need to take steps to protect yourself. If all your money is tied up in stocks, bonds, and traditional markets, you may be vulnerable. So gold is one of the very best ways to protect your retirement. No matter what happens, you own your own gold. It's real, it's physical, and it's always been valuable since the dawn of time. Call Legacy Precious Metals today at 866-528-1903 or visit them online at LegacyPMInvestments.com. That's LegacyPMInvestments.com where you can download the free investor's guide. You can also go to my Facebook page, Jenna Ellis. I am a public figure on Facebook and I just posted yesterday a really great interview with the president of Legacy Precious Metals who is discussing why you need to start your retirement account even if you're in your your 20s or 30s. There is always a great time to protect your retirement and invest just like you want to protect your health over the long term. So go to Legacy Precious Metals at LegacyPMInvestments.com or call 866-528-1903. As a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump, Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. Welcome to another episode of The Jenna Ellis Show. I'm Jenna Ellis, and make sure that you are subscribed anywhere that you are either listening or watching on our Rumble YouTube channels or anywhere that you stream audio. It's really important so that you get the next breaking episode as soon as it drops. So we've been talking this week about uh, Supreme Court opinions, about the January 6th committee circus, about a lot of things going on in the landscape of politics, law, and policy. And one of the things that happened uh, late last week that we definitely want to get to because it's actually one of the most important headlines that probably you don't even know about because the mainstream media decides what to tell you is newsworthy um, is from my good friend Corey DeAngelis, who said this, breaking the Arizona Senate just passed a bill to fund students instead of systems. This will be the most expansive school choice initiative in the nation. All families will be able to take their children's education dollars to the education providers of their choosing. So the Senate vote was 16 to 10 along party lines. Um, it already passed in the House 31 to 26 and now goes to the governor's desk. So joining me now is the man himself, Cord DeAngelis, who um, has, you know, you have your PhD, you are all things uh, students, funding students instead of systems. You are the expert on school choice. So thanks for keeping us informed on a lot of these critical issues. So uh, what's going on in Arizona? Why is this a huge win? Yeah, look, it's hard to overstate this victory. This win is the biggest school choice victory in U.S. history. In Arizona, after the governor signs the bill, and he's expected to do so soon, once it's implemented, every single family, regardless of income, will be able to take their kids' state-funded education dollars to any education provider of their choosing, whether it's a public school, private school, charter school, or home-based education option. In Arizona, that amount is about $7,000 per student. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a monumental win. For, for a long time, Arizona and Florida have kind of been neck and neck for the top school choice state. But when Governor Ducey signs this bill into law, he'll be effectively walking up to Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida and snatching the school choice championship belt out of his hands. Mm. So why hasn't Florida yet um, or any of these you know, other states done what Arizona has? I think Florida uh, has done a, a huge step in the right direction by having over 100,000 students participating in private school choice programs. They have a lot of opportunities already, but most of these initiatives in the state of Florida are targeted to certain categories of students based on income or special needs. Um, but Arizona just blew the cap off of their program and, and just made it available to everyone, which is how it should be done because we already fund education for every single kid. 
And uh, in the current system, that just goes to a government-run building. We should allow every single family, no qualifiers, to be able to take that same funding to wherever their kid gets an education, because education funding is supposed to be meant for educating children, not for propping up and protecting a particular institution, whether that's public or private. And I think in Florida, they've kind of been complacent because they have done a really good job, relatively speaking, compared to other states. But now Arizona cemented itself as the number one state for school choice in the nation. And Florida has some catching up to do. And look, this is the point of the laboratories of democracy in the U.S. And all Republican governors should follow Ducey's lead and 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 the, the lead from the senators and and representatives in Arizona as well. Uh, not not many people might know this, but in Arizona, the margins are slim in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Uh, the senator, the Senate and the House has a one seat majority for Republicans. And so they literally needed every single Republican to vote for the party platform school choice to have this historic victory. Meanwhile, you have some other states like um, Oklahoma and Utah that had some school choice bills fail this year. And it's because you have some fake Republicans in the legislature opposing their party platform. It's time for parents to hold them accountable. And this, this is happening in uh, elections across the nation. In Iowa, for example, their Senate this past year passed an education savings account bill, the gold standard of school choice policy, uh, with all but one Republican voting in favor, which is pretty close to unanimous mm -hmm. Republican support. But then their House, which had 60% Republicans in Iowa, could not get it done. And Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds, a school choice champion, went out and endorsed nine Republicans in the primaries. Four or five of them were incumbents or, or against four or five incumbents. And eight of those nine won on the issue of school choice as the dividing line in most of those races. Wow. So I think Republicans are starting to, to wake up and realize that uh, school choice is a uh, an emerging litmus test issue particularly in yeah, primary. as it should be. I mean, and this, frankly, really, Corey, shouldn't even be a partisan issue because the only reason that Democrats would oppose this, obviously teachers unions, but if they want indoctrination and programming of students from a particular worldview perspective, rather than allowing parents to choose what type of education they get, because you know any of these schools, whether it's a parochial school, whether it's public school, um, they all at least teach the same, I mean, well, some of them don't teach math anymore, but, you know, they should be teaching just the <laughs> same basic education uh, factors that fulfill the requirements of compulsory education laws. They don't, though, have the same worldview perspective on issues like CRT, on issues of uh, maybe religious education, on some of these other things. So the only reason that Democrats or these rhino Republicans would oppose school choice would be because they want our children to learn from a certain perspective. So how important is it for parents mm -hmm. and for voters to understand that the only reason that you would oppose school choice would be for these types of programming uh, agendas and things like CRT? Yeah, look, we've seen a lot of battles pop up over the past couple of years in particular when it comes to curriculum or mask mandates or whether it's in-person versus remote learning. And I'd say these are all just symptoms of the larger issue, which happens to be we force millions of families to send their kids to a one-size-fits-all government-run school system that by definition is destined to fail in a society where you have people that disagree about how they want their kids raised and to be educated. And I think with, with the CRT battles, a lot of the top-down solutions like banning it or requiring certain concepts in the classroom, it could be a tweak of, of the system in the right direction. But fundamentally, the problem is with the system itself. And uh, we're seeing a lot of implementation issues with those types of, of laws. And I think the better solution is from the bottom up to allow families to vote with their feet to institutions that align with their mm -hmm. values. And then we can move forward with free the freedom as opposed to force. And instead of uh, controlling what other people's kids learn, you can just decide for your own kids, which I think is the, the best solution. And then also, I think most of the opposition is rooted in power dynamics. It's mostly because the teachers union backed candidates and teachers unions in general want to protect the status quo so they can get your kids education dollars regardless of how well they do. And what we saw in so many states across the country starting in March of 2020, regardless whether they even open their doors for business. 
Um, because a lot of the same people who support funding students when it comes to higher education scholarships like Pell Grants and the GI Bill, or whether it comes to pre-K initiatives like Head Start, or whether it comes to funding people directly when it comes to uh, the healthcare industry or, or grocery stores, they get all up in arms about the concept only when it comes to the in-between years of K-12 education. And the reason for that is obvious to me. It's that choice is the norm with higher education, pre-K, and everything else, but choice threatens and entrenched special interest, the unions, only when it comes to K-12. through So they fight as hard as possible against any changes. But I think we're winning. Families are figuring out there isn't any good reason to fund the buildings when you can fund the students Yeah, and this is instead. perhaps a silver lining of the pandemic to really um, blow open this issue so that parents who uh, looked at other options from you know homeschooling to remote learning and other things are now going, well, wait a minute, we want to still um, exercise these options. Why should we have to go along with just um, the public schools and just what the one choice that the government is sort of forcing on our kids. But the one um, pushback to school choice and this type of uh, system in Arizona that I've heard that I want to get your response to is that um, there's been some pushback saying that there will be strings attached. And if the government gives, you know, say $7,000 per student, then that's going to come with some strings attached. And ultimately, this is a move for the government to go in and uh, be able to control the curriculum in some of these other uh, schools, like the religious schools or some of these, um, you know, kind of co-ops and other things. What's your response to that objection? Yeah, you've got to read the Arizona bill and see that there isn't any government curriculum mandates. So it's important to see what's actually written into the bill. But even if there was, let's say, certain types of regulations, I'd say this argument is making perfect the enemy of the good. And the reality is the status quo is far from perfect, and it's much worse than having the choice for families to be able to opt in and opt out each year. Each individual family can make the cost-benefit decision each and every year whether they want to um, accept the funding or not. And if this was forced onto families and they had to take the money, I would be against uh, these types of initiatives. But it's not. It's voluntary, and every single school has the decision to opt in or out each and every year. But look, the reality is nine out of 10 kids are stuck in government-run, government-operated schools today, and we should we should take an incremental victory as a step in the right direction, even if it isn't utopia. And by the way, the government can try to regulate private education already without allowing families to have a choice. So if we have a hostile government takeover with, with far lefties who want to control private education, they could do so without school choice programs. So I I would argue that the better uh, step in the right direction would be to allow families to have a choice, which would allow more people to experience private education. We'll have a a broader coalition to defend against those future calls for regulations, which, by the way, would probably come from the people that are indoctrinated in the government-run schools today. So there there is a, a doomsday scenario and if we do nothing, yeah. and if we don't accept educational freedom. Yeah. And by the way, uh, we were talking silver linings. Another silver lining of the closures was that families are more hospitable and uh, to, to home-based mm-hmm. education. People are more favorable to homeschooling than they have been in previous years, pre-pandemic. That will de- de- decrease the likelihood that the rest of society will call to regulate homeschooling and private education. So that's another reason we should get mm-hmm. more people making the idea mainstream and school choices. Yeah, and we always have to make sure that anything that we do pass in the legislature, you know, obviously reading the bill is is definitely a good place to start, as you suggested. Uh, But then also, you know, anything that we're giving to make sure that it doesn't then become manipulated down the road. But those types of, um, of parameters and guardrails are something that we do in every avenue of any sort of government regulation to say, okay, we're regulating it to this extent, but not overbroad. And we always have to keep the guardrails in place to make sure that it's not um, some sort of overbroad thing or some, you know, backdoor of government control. And, you know, we had a significant win from the Supreme Court in the main case where, um, you know, in that instance, the Supreme Court said that um, funding to the parents can be used for religious education. And that was no strings attached. And that was something that the Supreme Court now, you know, we have that opinion. We have the Trinity Lutheran opinion that was actually cited in the main case uh, this term. And so all of these, as you said, you know, are monumental victories. But I agree that, 
you know, we as the, the right and hopefully the conservative right need to take some of these incremental wins instead of just saying, well, if it's not absolutely perfect, then we're fine with this really leftist progressive status quo, because I guarantee you the Democrats are going to keep pushing for incrementalism to the left. That's how we've gotten shifted so far. So we need to start rolling this back. I mean, in the same way that heartbeat bills. Yeah, well, that's not perfect in you know, in foreclosing any abortion, that is way better than having abortion until the moment of birth or even a few minutes or days after birth. And so we need to, as conservatives, be looking at this rationally. Um, and so where do you see then with the Arizona Senate doing that, uh, doing this and putting pressure on other red states, where do you see the school choice argument going from here? I think it's only going to get better. We're already at all-time high support for school choice. We already had the year of school choice with legislation passed in 19 states expanding educational freedom in 2021. Arizona just won up them all. So I think we're going to see different governors competing with one another. I just saw before we got on the show that Governor Abbott in Texas tweeted out, you know, Latinos support school choice and Texas leaders need to listen to wow. them. So we're seeing more and more um, Republicans stepping up to the plate. And look, the reality is Republicans have been calling themselves the parents party, but Republicans in Arizona just proved it because school choice and parental rights and education is the best way to empower families to, to choose the education providers that work best for them. If you want to be the parents party, you have to support this kind of initiative. And look, it doesn't have to be an either or conversation either. I've heard people say, well, you know, well, what about taking over control of the school boards? Or what about fixing the teacher pipeline, which can affect public and private mm -hmm. schools? Let's yes, do we it should all. do that too. Yeah. But we shouldn't pit these policies against one another. We should fight on all fronts. Not all battles are, are no battles are won on one front. We'll have to fight at the flanks. And um, we should talk about multiple avenues towards success. I think school choice is the optimal solution, if not the perfect solution. Uh, it's, it's not the perfect solution, but it's the best solution we have available. But we also do need to be uh, looking into other things to tweak the current system that we already yeah, have. Yeah, really well said. And so for parents who are listening who want to get involved in this, uh, what are your suggestions? I mean, you know, I would say take take the language of the bill in Arizona down to your state capital to, you know, your uh, majority or minority leader who's a Republican and say, hey, this is a great bill. This is where you need to start. And I'll come down and testify for it. I mean, get involved. What are some um, some ways that parents can try to accomplish in their state what Arizona is doing? Yeah, so Arizona's bill is House Bill 2853. Let's make sure that's right. For, maybe we'll put in the show notes if I was wrong. But um, yeah, you can look at the text. And one of the other good things about their text, they don't just not include regulations of private education, but they also have, um, they separate out homeschooling from ESA mm -hmm. students in the law. So even if it, you take the money and it looks like what you're doing is, is homeschooling, they'll call you an ESA student under the law as opposed to the homeschooler as a, as a homeschooler, because that will reduce the likelihood of any bleed over uh, of regulations from pure homeschoolers as opposed to ESA That's students. important. So those, those are other things that you should look out yeah, for. Yeah, that is incredibly um, important because a lot of the homeschool community um, that I know and have um, also been a part of, I mean, I was homeschooled K through 12. I think, you know, everyone watching knows that I've had a lot of different, you know, homeschool issues on this show, but that is incredibly important that the government doesn't try to over-regulate um, just under the, the auspices of, you know, well, now that we're giving you money, we need to be able to come in and make sure that what you're doing is appropriate or, you know, any of those things. So that's an incredibly important distinction. Yeah, and if you want to help us in the fight for education freedom, listeners can go to educationfreedompledge.com. You can sign up there, and whenever a bill is moving in your state or you want to see what's going, with, we'll keep you updated with, uh, I can send out uh, emails to you guys. It's educationfreedompledge.com. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Corey. And everyone should follow Corey DeAngelis on Twitter as well because you have all of the breaking news on uh, what's going on in the school choice world and really appreciate your insight, your expertise, and your advocacy. So thank you for being a champion 
on this issue. This is where, you know, so many people ask like, you know, well, where can I get involved on things? And it's like, pick, pick an issue and really get to know that issue so well. And I think you are an amazing example of that, Corey, and you've done so much great work. And um, you also will educate so many people on these issues of what's going on when they otherwise wouldn't know about it. So thank you so much for your work in this area and look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Jenna. Legacy Precious Metals is the company that I trust to give you good and patient counsel for investing in your retirement. The Biden administration has caused a financial crisis and they have no clue how to fix it. Oil prices have skyrocketed and when oil prices go up, not only do your expenses go up, but the cost of transportation and shipping spikes, leading the prices of goods to rise. And when and we are already seeing record inflation. That's the last thing that we need. Our economy is in trouble and you need to take steps to protect yourself. If all your money is tied up in stocks, bonds, and traditional markets, you may be vulnerable. So gold is one of the very best ways to protect your retirement. No matter what happens, you own your own gold. It's real, it's physical, and it's always been valuable since the dawn of time. Call Legacy Precious Metals today at 866-528-1903 or visit them online at LegacyPMInvestments.com. That's LegacyPMInvestments.com where you can download the free investor's guide. You can also go to my Facebook page, Jenna Ellis. I am a public figure on Facebook and I just posted yesterday a really great interview with the president of Legacy Precious Metals who is discussing why you need to start your retirement account even if you're in your 20s or 30s. There is always a great time to protect your retirement and invest just like you want to protect your health over the long term. So go to Legacy Precious Metals at LegacyPMInvestments.com or call 866-528-1903. I also want to talk about another great American who is the sponsor of this podcast. And that, of course, is my good friend, Mike Lindell. He has been canceled out of so many box stores for simply standing up for his own political opinion and disagree or not uh, or support him or not. It is a fundamental right of every American to be able to voice their opinion, and that absolutely includes politics. That absolutely includes uh, issues that are central to our culture. That includes faith. Uh, Mike is such a very sincere Christian, and I am proud to consider him a friend, and he is, of course, a friend of this show. So right now, there is a special on MyPillow.com. Click on the new radio listener specials. Get deep discounts on all MyPillow products, including a great towel set, which is a six-piece set it includes two bath, two hand towels, two washcloths, made in the USA, regularly $109.99, now just $39.99, but you have to use the promo code Jenna. That's J-E-N-N-A. That tells Mike that you listen to this show. You're happy that he is uh, a sponsor of this show and you will get great, great discounts, but use the promo code Jenna. That's J-E-N-N-A, either at MyPillow.com or call one 800 564 8475 and use the promo code Jenna.